All right, hello and welcome back. My name is Cameron Kirk, and this is my tutorial series on using and working with DE10 Nano. And in this tutorial, we're going to be working through this write up here, the My First FPGA write up. Um, I figured, you know, uh, working with uh, hardware like this, I feel like it's not very friendly to get started with, so I figured it might be a good idea to sort of walk you through this tutorial. Um, we'll do it together. Um, but then from here on out, I'm going to be sort of doing my own content that you can follow along with. But um, other than just telling you, go out and do this on your own, I think it might be a little bit more friendly to get into if I do it right in front of you and you can follow along with me. So um, the link is in the description uh, for this repo. You go to this GitHub repo here and uh, go ahead and clone it. Um, the Terrasec DE10 Nano Kit. We are going to be going inside the tutorials folder and we're doing this My First FPGA project. And what you need to do is uh, clone this repository. So you go to the home page, click that link in the description and uh, you know download the zip file or you can clone it this way. I have went ahead and already did that. Um, I have this new folder here call in my DE10 Nano folder in my documents. I have this live demos folder. This is for my live demos. And this is my second video in the tutorial series. And we have here Terrasec DE10 Nano Kit Master. Um, this is the repo and inside tutorials. Inside my first FPGA, I went ahead, went ahead and downloaded this uh, write-up PDF. To get that, you go back to the GitHub repository. You click on tutorials and then the readme, it has the link down here for download tutorial PDF file uh, right up my first FPGA. FPGA. Click that link down here. You have this uh, PDF here. You click that and download it. Go ahead and place it into the same folder as my first FPGA. Great, once you've done that, the other thing I'm assuming you have is I'm assuming you have Quartus version 17, Quartus Prime installed. We're gonna be working with this today, so I expect that you have it downloaded. The link is in the description if you don't have that set up yet. Um, get that downloaded, get that installed, and then we'll be good to go. Now, before we can actually start digging into this very uh, nice tutorial, um, and if you want to spend more time with this tutorial on your own time, feel free. I'm just going to kind of skim through and get it done real fast um, and kind of just bring up important points I think that are worth talking about. Before we get started, the other thing we need to do is we need to install the USB blaster. If you haven't done this yet, this is required. This is what's going to allow you to connect your DE10 Nano to your PC and uh, program it. So um, I have this tutorial here. This I downloaded from the Terrasic website. It's not necessary for you to go download this, just kind of follow along with me. Now I already had this step done. And then what I did was I went back and I tried to uninstall the USB blaster um, for the sake of this tutorial. So it still might look a little bit different from how it looks for you when you first plug in your board to your PC. But uh, I'll show you what I mean, let's, let's dive in. So. I'm going to go down here to um, installing USB Blaster 2 driver. And it says go ahead and connect your development board by plugging in the USB cable um, to the J13 connector. Okay, so let me switch over to the tabletop and I'll show you what's going on here. So I have my DE10 and I have my uh, wall adapter connected so it is getting power. And we have uh, this uh, USB cable here. And I'm going to plug it into the, what is that, a micro USB? I'm going to plug it into the USB on the same side as the wall adapter. That is going to be your J13. And if you look really closely, you can see some text on it that says J13 on your board. Anyways, go ahead and plug that in. And that's all we need to do over here. Let's switch back over to the computer. We heard that nice little connecting sound. And I'm going to close this and show you how to get to Device Manager. So. Uh, down here on the start menu, you can see my mouse, right click, and up here we have device manager. Go ahead and click on that. And we have this screen. So on my screen, it says DESOC, that is our guy. 
Um, on their screen, it says unknown device. So I think yours is gonna look like this screenshot here. Um, if not, maybe it looks like my screenshot. But anyways, we'll just follow these steps. So power up the board, open device manager in Windows, you'll find an unknown device. Select the unknown device and update the driver's software. So what they mean is you're gonna right click the device, click update driver, and I've done this so many times, I know what to do. You're gonna click browse my computer for drivers. And it is important that you already have Cordis 2 installed on your system. Because you're gonna to need to navigate to the installation directory for where you have it installed. There is going to be a folder for the drivers. So let's do this. I'm gonna to go to browse and then I'm gonna to go to this PC and then I'm gonna to go to my local C disk and I'm gonna to go to programs and files 86. Ooh, I don't remember where I have it installed. Isn't it under Altera? Let's try this one. Altera, Atmel, no. Hmm, where do I have it installed? Okay, so if you're having trouble where it is installed, here is what you can do. Go to the start, click the search, type in Quartus since you have it installed. Right click on the app, open file location. Now it's gonna show you this shortcut for the file type, it says shortcut. Right click on that and then click open file location. And here is your install directory. So where am I? I'm in C, FPGA, Intel FPGA, line 17 coordinates. Okay, that's where I am. So I, uh, oh, oh, so once you're here, if you click on this address bar, it actually shows you the file path right here. So it says I'm on my C drive, Intel FPGA underscore light, version 17, Cordis bin 64. So what I need to do is go to Intel FPGA light version 17 and then we're going to go into Cortis. we're not going to go into wherever i said that installer was we're going to go to Cortis, and then we're looking for not bin 64 we're looking for drivers and here we see usb blaster 2 and i have a 64-bit machine but i'll click the top level folder and it will check both folders automatically actually i'll do 64-bit okay now that path is in here, we have include subfolder selected. We'll click next. Could not find, uh oh. All right, I'm gonna pause the recording. Okay, I think I resolved my problem. I'm just gonna reconnect the board. Connect it back. Okay. Okay, come on, come on. All right, we're gonna do update driver, browse. And then what I changed this time was instead of doing the X64, like I did, I'm gonna actually do USB blaster too. Click that folder, click okay, allow subfolders, click next. And then you should get this pop-up, I'll click install. And installed successfully, click close. And now we should see the JTAG cables interface. I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing for this other guy here. Next. And that worked too. So now we should see two things under the JTAG cables, this new category under device manager. Okay. And now we are all set to get started on this My First FPGA tutorial. Great. Make sure I'm recording. Okay, so let's dig in. So this PDF is actually pretty nice to read. Um, you should read through it if you're interested. Oh, by the way, um, let me switch back over to the tabletop. Um, I should have mentioned this earlier, but uh, please make sure that you have your SD card removed from that slot right there. The thing that I learned from this tutorial is uh, when you have that SD card in there, it is actually going to erase any design files that you put onto your FPGA. Um, and this has the, uh, the, you know, the out of box preloaded image that 
came with it when I purchased it, already loaded on there. Remove that from the board before you plug it in, connect it and everything. I think it won't matter for adding the USB blaster drivers, but from this point forward, I would recommend disconnecting power, um, remove the power, remove the SD card, put it somewhere safe, uh, put the power back in and we'll be good to go. All right, anyways. All right, so we're gonna do a hello world, uh, blinking LED, blah, 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 blah. We're gonna do some Verilog code. We're gonna do pin assignments, timing constraints. Ah, man, I don't like the timing constraints thing. I don't think that's uh, important for getting started. Uh, we're gonna blink one of the eight green LEDs. Blah, 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 blah. Great, okay. So we're gonna scroll through here. Feel free to uh, take a look at some of this stuff on your own time if you wanna actually read what they're saying. So they want us to make a new project. So let's go ahead and do that. We have Cordis, I already have mine open. We'll click on new project. And that should open up this project wizard. We'll click next. And they want us to pick a place for where we're gonna have this project. I'm gonna make a place inside my DE10 Nano. We're gonna do live demos. We're gonna do vid2. I'm gonna do a new folder. I'm gonna call this um, my first FPGA. We're gonna open that folder, select that folder. All right, and then what do we wanna name this project? Now the name does matter. So we're all done with the USB blaster instructions. We'll close that. The naming does matter. Okay, so they say click next. They called theirs Blink. And the reason why naming matters is there's something called a top level entity. And I'm not gonna to get too deep into it by, by, right now, but um, basically design files, have a, they have a hierarchy and the top level entity's name has to match the, the project's name. Um, I, there are ways to get around that, but um, it is just so much nicer if you make the names matchy matchy. Anyways, we're gonna be making an empty project. Let's just double check on those instructions. And it doesn't exist, click yes. Empty project, click next. You won't be adding any files here. So if you already have pre-existing design files, you want to pull in, and that is handy if you're working with seven segment displays or other modules that you've already written the design for and you need to use it over and over again, you would add them in here. We'll see that later in, the tutorial, in this tutorial series, but we're not going to do it in this episode. They said they won't be adding any files here. Okay, click next. Yeah, I'm trying to keep this video short. Okay, so this is something where Honestly, I'm just gonna get out the snipping tool. <clears throat> All right, so I got the uh, snipping tool here. I'm just gonna screenshot that. This is important. So this is uh, the device that we're programming. And uh, every single time you make a new project, you're gonna have to know what device you're programming. Um, I will just put this device info. I'm just gonna save that because I always, I, I really have been coming back to this PDF just for this information. So over on Quartus, we need to select Cyclone 5 SE base. Let me see that snipping tool, Cyclone 5 SE base. And then the 5 SCE, this is the annoying part. So I'm gonna stretch this out a little bit. I'm going to pull this over so I can read all the names. We are looking for 5SEBA6U. So we need a 6U. Oh, we got that. Uh, 6U23I7. 23I7. 23I7. Let's see if that's the right one. 5SCSEBA6U23I7. So yeah, we got that selected, got that selected. We're good, right, we're good. And then we'll click next. Yep, just like that. You do this every time you make a new project. So um, eventually you'll start memorizing what your device name is, but that is very important information for this to work. Click next. And then this is where I got stuck. I've never seen this screen before in my experience using Cordis. Um, and basically they just say we will be using the default tools so no changes are going to be made here click next important to know that don't change anything and then click finish click finish 
and you're going to be brought to your project homepage. It's loading, of course. I'm going to pause and we'll come back when it's done. Oh, never mind. It's done. Great. So now that we have our project, we're going to make a Verilog HDL file. So the way they do that is they are going to go up to file. We're going to do new and this little window should pop up. I have two screens, so put it on the bottom screen. I'm going to click Verilog HDL, click OK. And there we go. We just made a Verilog file for our project. Okay, next up, we're going to do file save as and name it blink. And this is also important. Make sure you get all the names matchy matchy. So I'll do save as and we're going to name our Verilog file blink. And it already has that name populated in there for us because that's what we named our project. Everything needs to be matchy matchy or it will be mad at you. And we will save it inside our folder for our project. Great. So now we're going to create the Verilog module and uh, we're just going to copy and paste the code. And in the next video, we're going to dig into uh, they're doing some pretty advanced stuff. It's kind of difficult to really explain what all this means, but we're just going to copy in some code. So I'm going to go back I'm going to go back to the repository. And I suppose if you have this cloned, you could do it from your local folder as well. The HDL source, that's what you need. And then you need the blink.v. And what I'll do is I'll go ahead and just copy all this code here. And then we'll go back to our Cordis and we'll paste it in there. And I'll do control S to save. Very good. So now we copied in their example code. Great. So now we're going to do analysis and synthesis. So you're going to right click on analysis and synthesis and click start. I'm not really sure why they do it this way, but whatever, we'll follow their methods. Start. And I'm going to go ahead and pause the tutorial. This does take a moment. Okay. And we are back and we have that little green check mark next to analysis and synthesis. What shall we do next? Great, green check mark, that's awesome. We're doing pin assignments. All right, so pin assignments. This is something we will see more in the next video. But basically, we're gonna go up to assignments and we're gonna go to, what is it, pin planner? Pin planner? Pin planner? Yeah, pin planner. So it opens up this window here and it looks all crazy and complicated and you're not really sure what's going on. But basically, Every circuit has inputs and outputs. Every component has inputs. Every module has inputs and outputs. All right, and then they even say the direction. But what you want is you want to actually hook this up to something. So in this case, we have an output called LED. Now, wouldn't it be nice if we actually connected it to a pin, connect the signal to a pin that is actually wired up to an LED? And there are onboard LEDs on the DE10. Um, so what we need to do is we need to assign it a location. Now, if I click on this, there's a lot of locations. There's a lot of pins on this um, chip, and uh, they all they're all you know named all complicated and yada yada yada. I don't know what AG23 is. It, this isn't helpful. IO Bank for oh my gosh, overwhelming. This is probably the hardest part um, to do is knowing those pin assignments. So. The tutorial does show you where um, what, what what locations to use, but um, I'll just do a brief little aside here and I'll show you how you can get this information on your own. So let's take a look at the tutorial. Um, they say LED needs to go to W15 and clock needs to go to V11. But let's go ahead and verify that this is true by finding that information out for ourselves. So the way we're going to do this is if I go into my DE10 nano folder and if I go into my repos, uh, the link will be in the description, but you should remember this nano web content and there's this web server out of box experience that you can um, try out. You don't have to actually go do it because you can just download the web server content 
all the source code yourself. I'm gonna click on this index.html here and open this up. This website. So uh, link is in the description if you want to download this repo. Um, but uh, once you download this repo, you can go to here and then we're gonna go to, we need the board block diagram and schematic and we really just want the schematic. And that is one way of getting to it. Um, I would say this schematic PDF, let's just go ahead and, uh, you know, if we go into assets, this schematic PDF right here, DE10 Nano schematic, I would uh, cut this or copy this. And I, I wouldn't cut it. I would copy this and I would place it somewhere else that's a little bit easier to access. So you don't have to go to the, um, go through the process of opening uh, your, um, the, the web content for the DE10 web server. I keep mine. I have this folder here. Um, this I actually got from the TerraSec website. Um, there's the schematics folder and there's my schematic folder. And you'll see that this is actually the exact same uh, document. This is just the schematic PDF. Anyways, um, you need access to the schematic PDF if you want to figure out where your pins are connected. So I'm going to cheat a little bit in the interest of time, and I'm just going to do a search for pin W15. So I'll do control F and then we'll do pin underscore W15 search. Oh my goodness. Okay. We'll do it the hard way. I thought I was going to cheat. So you'll see on page 17, there is button and LED. Oh, page 20. That's what we want. FPGA button switch LED. So we want to go to page 20. Let's go to page 20 and we can see here that we have, well, you, I mean, again, we're just kind of looking at schematics here. Um, we have all of these things here, but we want to know what pins they're on. So LED zero. So if we go up again, you just kind of have to flip through and kind of stare at this a little bit. Um, but if I go up to the Cyclone 5 chip. Here it is. And we'll go up one more. You'll start to see some of these, like GPIO. Yeah. Do, 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 do. I'm going to pause the recording and I'll find it and then I'll come back. Okay, we're back. And uh, so it's on page three, the Cyclone 5 SOC Bank 5. Now there's all these different banks here. And if you zoom in, you'll see we have LED, LED zero is gonna be on pin W15. So it says it right there. And then it has all this fancy stuff in there. So LED zero is W15. Um, but anyways, you have to kind of flip around on these pages and you'll start to see you know, LED zero is a thing. And then if you want to connect it to the Cyclone 5 FPGA, um, you want to connect it to W15. So that's where they're getting this information. Um, one thing I went in here looking for was I wanted to understand how does the Arduino um, headers connect to pins. And these are the pin assignments for the Arduino headers. So we'll see that in a later tutorial. But if you want to get to, you know, Arduino IO7, um, that's going to be on AH8. We'll see this in the next tutorial. But anyways, um, I just wanted to show you very quickly. Um, so uh, you go to the Arduino page from page 19, page 19, and there's all our Arduinos. And then uh, you can see, you know, I forget which one it was. IO IO5 is pin number three on the JP3 header. And then you can go look at your board and see where the JP3 header is. And then you can see which one is pin number three. And this is on the uh, one by eight header. And then, you know, okay, once I connect, uh, you know, pin five to my circuit, that'll be, you know, pin three on the header. Anyways, you have to kind of just do the connect the dot type of thing on the schematic. Um, yeah, anyways, let's get back to it. So, you know, they're telling the truth on these pin locations. Let's go ahead and wire up these pin locations. So location, this is W15. I'll just type in W15, push enter, and it populates the rest. And the other guy is V11. So I'll click there, type in V11, hit enter, and it populates the rest. Now, one thing they ask you to do 
and I've just been kind of copying this because I've never done that before, is they actually changed the IO standard. So I didn't argue with that. I just went ahead and listened. They did the 3.3 volt um, LVTTL. LVTTL. They did that for both of them. So I'm going to go ahead and do the same. That is a little bit beyond my understanding. I don't know what that means. And then they left everything... Oh, they, and they put this at 16 milliamps. Oh yeah, they went ahead and put it at 16 milliamps. Great. So, moving right, right along here. Close the pin planner. The changes you make to the pin planner are saved automatically. Close the pin planner. Great. Create an SDC file. Before you compile the code, you need to blah, 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 create a Blink SDC and add it to the Blink project. All right. So they do it this way. They let me close this from inside the repository. Let me get back to my live demos folder. So uh, in your clone repository that you downloaded, I'd have the zip downloaded here. You go to tutorials, you go to my first FPGA, you go to HDL source, and you copy the SDC. So let me click copy. And by the way, just in case that wasn't super clear what I just did, I went to the repo, I went to tutorials, I just did this on my computer, HDL source, and I got this file right here. We want to copy this code. Um, we want to paste it into the project um, that we're currently working with in Cordis. So I'm going to click copy. We'll get this copied. Copy. And then we're going to go out of the repository. We're going to go into our Cordis project. And we'll just paste it right here. We're pasting it right next to our blink.verilog, blink.v. Okay. And these timing constraints, this is basically like what your requirements are in terms of like if you're, you know, you need high precision and it has to do things at certain timings. Um, I'm not going to get into why. We're going to talk about that another time. Oh, yeah, they have a sidebar topic. I recommend go reading that. Okay, let's keep going. I'm trying to go quickly here. Uh, so we're going to go to Project Menu and then Add Remove Files and Project. Okay, so to do that, we're going to go to Project. Add or remove files from project. Should open up this window. And then uh, we should already be here. So we're going to go file name, click the dot, dot, dot. And down here, we have to change this to script, I believe. Script files. Yep. Blink SDC. Click open. Click OK. And we should have it now. We can close out of the schematic. We're done with that for now. Okay, okay. And then we're going to compile the design. Yep. We'll uh, right-click on compile and click start. Now, I don't know why they right-click down here, but we'll go ahead and do that. You can also click this play button up here. Okay, I'm going to pause the recording while this compiles. This should take a moment. Okay, we're back. Um, it says down here that took two minutes and 30 seconds. So uh, let's just uh, jump right back in. Okay, so we have it compiled. We got the little check marks on everything, which is looking good. You can check out these sidebar topics on your own time. Um, yeah, so the reason why I'm kind of walking through this tutorial is um, this is really sort of exactly the kind of process we're going to be going through uh, basically on every single tutorial, every single project that I do. You're going to be writing Verilog code and then you have to do your pin assignments for however you want it to connect and then you have to, com you have to compile, you have to get it to um, do the synthesis and analysis, it's got to make the RTL and all this stuff. What we're doing right now is basically like your first time through, you know, like around the block, like this is 
this is really the process you have to go through. So, um, great. Just wanted to bring that up. Okay, so now we're gonna program the FPGA. Now, I do not like to go through this menu here. I don't know why they do it that way, but that's fine. Uh, they finally mention, uh, final step is to program the FPGA. Be sure to remove the SD card from the board. Just want to remind you, remove that SD card. To program the FPGA, you need to connect the board to your computer via the USB Blaster 2 port, which we have already set up at the start of this tutorial. And uh, now that we're connected, let's see here, we're gonna to go to the program device menu. So what I like to do is I like to go to, what is it, uh, sign, oh, did I forget? Project, what is it? Processing, tools? Oh man, I guess I always forget where to go. Programmer, yeah, tools programmer. And it should open up this window. Here, okay. And then we need to do the hardware setup. So yours should say no hardware. Mine has hardware because I've already programmed the board once before. We'll select DESOC, close. Great. And then they click auto detect, auto detect. This window should pop up. We need to select our device, which I don't remember. Oh, it's the first one. Click OK. And we need to add and oh, we're going to update the project. Go ahead and click yes to overwrite any existing settings. Click yes. All right, we need to add the .soc file. Right click on the file column for the 5SCSEBA6 device. This guy, right click, and we're going to do change file. This window should pop up. Go to the output files and click on SOF and click open. Great. Uh, so the SOF is your programming file. SRAM object files is what an SOF is. Our binary files containing the data for configuring the SRAM based device. Our FPGA is based on SRAM. The Intel Core is software program device it looks for the SOF file and gets the programming bit stream. Yeah, there's interesting stuff in here. You can read all this. Okay, cool. So we got to check the box for program and then we'll click start and this will program the device. So right now it is programming the device and it has been done. So observe the blinking LED. Let's switch over to the tabletop here. And would you look at that? We got a blinking LED. Awesome. So let's go back to the desktop here. Congratulations, you made your first Blinky on the FPGA. Um, the Blinky is sort of the hello world of uh, embedded systems. Okay, so I welcome you to experiment on your own. This is where I will leave it up to you to spend some time um, doing the challenges that they give you. And they do give you the solution as well. Um, but uh, they, they challenge you to change the rate at which your LED is blinking. And uh, they also challenge you to connect more LEDs to your, uh, to your design. Now, if you don't get it working, just take a look at what they did in the solution. Um, they even give you the pinouts for connecting all the LEDs. And I believe all the way at the bottom, they give you the code. Yes, they give you the code to connect all the LEDs. Um, give it a try. If you don't get it working, don't sweat it too much. I don't think this is really, um, you know, the best introduction to Verilog. We're going to be doing a better introduction of Verilog by me in the next video. So, um, please tune in for the next video and thank you for watching. Super appreciate it. All right. Take care. Bye-bye.